Wherever there's a cop beating up a guy, I'll be there. I'll be in the way guys yell when they're mad. With these works of literature, authors turned inspiration into a lasting legacy. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 greatest novels of all time. I always say you got an uncommon level head for a white boy. Thank you, Jim. While self-help books and short stories are appreciated, our list focuses on novels by one specific author, which means the Bible failed to make the cut, as did a work like Hamlet, which is a play and not a novel. I do not know why yet I live to say this thing's to do. Number 10, To Kill a Mockingbird, Harper Lee. There's no hurry, for there's nowhere to go, nothing to buy, no money to buy it with. Although Maycomb County had recently been told that it had nothing to fear but fear itself. Pulled by Scout as a flashback to her childhood, To Kill a Mockingbird is the story of her father, morally upright lawyer Atticus Finch, who defends an innocent black man against a rape charge and teaches his children about racial equality. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view. Written by Truman Capote's childhood friend, it was an instant classic that won Harper Lee the Pulitzer Prize, Presidential Medal of Freedom, and defined a generation. In our courts, all men are created equal. I'm no idealist to believe firmly in the integrity of our courts and of our jury system. That's no ideal to me. Number nine, Don Quixote, Miguel de Cervantes. Lord and governor of this noble castle, my vigil is not yet complete. Considered the most important piece of writing to emerge from Spain's golden age, Don Quixote sees a middle-aged man attempt to restore the chivalry he's read about by going on a meandering quest, with his trusty squire Sancho Panza by his side. And so by the authority vested in me by the order of knighthood, I call upon your captain here to release you from tyranny. Ah! Translated into more languages than any other book except the Bible, Don Quixote was released in two volumes separated by 10 years. With shifting moralities, perspectives, and narrations, this tale of honor and romance influenced many novels that followed it, including Alexandre Dumas' The Three Musketeers and Mark Twain's Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Number 8. In Search of Lost Time, Marcel Proust. Whoever knew that a madeleine dipped in tea could stir such memories? Over 14 years in the early 20th century, one writer eschewed the notion that plot must push a novel along. Proust's seven volumes of towering prose, originally titled À la recherche du temps perdu, pervaded the collective consciousness of readers with dreamy imagery and reflective prose. Involuntary memory is the theme at the heart of the novel, with human senses guiding the narrative. Proust never stopped adding to his masterpiece until his untimely death. But fortunately for readers, In Search of Lost Time provides a lifetime of enjoyment. Entre les nous, y a la mort. Number 7. The Catcher in the Rye, J.D. Salinger. Ah, reading the classic mantra of teenage angst, I see. For rebellious youths worldwide, this post-World War II novel offered a protagonist to identify with. Holden Caulfield originated in Salinger's 1946 short story, Slight Rebellion Off Madison, and he takes us with him after his expulsion from prep school. With teen angst and disaffectation at its core, The Catcher in the Rye was controversial as it featured slang, cursing, and open discussions of teen sexuality. Page two, my brother's in Hollywood being a prostitute. Page three, what a phony slob his father was. The most banned book in the U.S. between 1961 and 1982, its anti-establishment themes inspired a new wave of global writers and resulted in a cult following for the reclusive author. Young Hinckley, the whiz kid who shot Reagan and his press secretary, said, if you want my defense, all you have to do is read Catcher in the Rye. Number six, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Mark Twain. I sure would like to be going somewhere. Come on, Hug. Let's go. After first appearing in the 1876 classic The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, social outcast Huck Finn appeared eight years later in one of America's most controversial novels. Based in a fictional Missouri town, Huckleberry Finn takes us on a descriptive and educational trip along the Mississippi River. 
accompanied by a runaway slave, Jim. Out on that river, I had a taste of freedom. And now being a slave again, well, it, it feels so, so very bad. Let's get on the Cairo hook, please. Written in colloquial speech, Twain's novel was occasionally banned for its coarseness and critique of the South. However, its sometimes satirical exploration of racism and societal pressures in pre-Civil War America opened the door for endless debate regarding ethical and cultural conflicts. Why'd you come and get me? Because you're my friend, Jim. Number 5. Lolita, Vladimir Nabokov Listen, didn't you, didn't you have a daughter? Didn't you have a daughter with a lovely name? Yeah, a lovely, what was it now? A lovely lyrical lilting name like, uh, uh... Lolita. To be a young woman in the 1950s meant displaying the proper amount of grace, beauty, and respect for elders. Russian novelist Vladimir Nabokov flipped the script on such ideals with his 1955 classic about a young temptress and the older man who desired her. 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. 45, 46. While critics often debate the predatory instincts of the characters, Lolita opened up international dialogue on sexual abuse, literary morals, and the comedic wordplay of Nabokov. Initially banned in parts of Europe, it was adapted by film director Stanley Kubrick, thus ensuring a lasting legacy in both media. You're not bound to him in any way, whereas you are bound to me by everything that we have lived through together, you and I. I'm going to have his baby in three months. Number four, The Great Gatsby, F. Scott Fitzgerald. How do you do, old sport? I'm Gatsby. One of America's most beloved novels was born in the Roaring Twenties. Painting an opulent picture of life in the imagined town of West Egg, Long Island, Gatsby is a story about the fleeting nature of the American dream. Look here, what's your opinion of me, anyhow? I hadn't really thought about it. With the enigmatic Jay Gatsby and his fixation with Daisy Buchanan at its center, Fitzgerald's story of new money and love lost was not an immediate hit, only selling 20,000 copies in its first year. But following World War II, the story of flapper culture was reborn and found its way into high schools and popular culture. You can't repeat the past. Can't repeat the past. Of course you can. Number three, War and Peace, Leo Tolstoy. Do you know why I'm going to the war? Do you think it's because I think that Napoleon is a monster? Do you think that I believe that we have any business fighting Austria's battles 2,000 miles from home? Do you think that I think Russia will be a greater nation when this war is over? Then why are you going? Because I'm married to one of the most loving and honorable and attractive women in Moscow. And I can't stand it. Long before the word epic became associated with viral videos, it was the perfect way to describe this 1869 Russian novel of incomparable power. Tolstoy undertook astounding historical research for War and Peace, acutely examining the French invasion of Russia while at the same time blending history with fiction into a work that defies categorization. Oh. Where are you going? To the army. They hope to make a stand against Napoleon at Borodino. With the narrative structure sometimes replaced by philosophical musings, War and Peace studies what drives people during the best of times and the worst of times, as they strive to discover the meaning of life. Weighty themes, but lasting ones. What do you think it represents? I think it can only represent, sire, the sincere wish of His Majesty the Tsar to avoid war and to prevent the shedding of both Russian and French blood. Number two, Madame Bovary, Gustave Flaubert. Joy was discouraged. Misery was forbidden. They were trying to break me, like a horse. While all publicity didn't necessarily equal good publicity for first-time authors in mid-19th century France, it did work out well for one celebrated novelist. I'm not frightening you at all. Gustave Flaubert's 1856 tale of rural life and bourgeois aspirations caught the attention of readers, but the sexual conquests of its leading lady rubbed many the wrong way. I have a lover. I have a lover. 
The French author was ultimately acquitted of any wrongdoing, as the focus shifted to his tight narrative structure, exquisite details, and juxtaposition of reality versus imagination. I feel no remorse, suffer no guilt, fear nothing. You have poured yourself into my heart, and love comes streaming out. With each extraordinary sentence, Flaubert pieced together a novel of endless fascination for readers. There's nothing left to feel. Before we crack the spine on our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. One ring to rule them all. To the past. Or to the future. To an age when thought is free. From the age of Big Brother. From the age of the thought police. Such a pity it should all be thrown away. So much English scholarship is for want of knowing what's been done by the rest of the world. What do you mean? I merely mean that the Germans have taken the lead in historical inquiries. Let everything I do, I do it for you. Anything that might be special in me is you. Thus, I put out the last fear. Number one, Anna Karenina, Leo Tolstoy. Anna! <laughs> With what he called his first true novel, Tolstoy not only pierced the collective consciousness of his native Russia, he also developed techniques that inspired literary realism and writers worldwide. As soon as we hear about the divorce, we'll get married, and then you won't have to torture yourself any longer. Set against the transformation in Russian culture occurring in the late 1800s, Anna Karenina is on the surface a story of infidelity and self-examination, with family, faith, and death anchoring the plot as well. Why did I give all this up? All this jolly life? For what? Pioneering the use of stream of consciousness to sinuously weave together tenuously associated thoughts, Anna Karenina is an astounding display of realism that stands as the supreme giant of literature. What's the matter, Anna? Is something wrong? No. No, I have to go to the station. Oh, then goodbye, Anna. A pleasant journey. I'm sorry that Don't we... bother. Goodbye. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite novel of all time? For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. From hell, hot ice happened here.